Bone Tomahawk from the year 2016 starring Kurt Russell. It is a western horror genre bender and I'm not gonna lie, it's a slow burn and it's maybe even a little bit boring at the start, but boy does it pick up because <laughs> this movie was fantastic. It's a slow burn, but if you have, you know, patience and you you like um, horror or you like westerns, you might enjoy this. I must say, I was pleasantly surprised by the ending. It was very, it, it made me really love, love this movie. So let's talk about... I mean, I guess, I think of horror, but it's saying this is Western action, and I guess you could say, but it's sort of like a horror movie at the end to me, a little bit. Uh, Bone Tomahawk, 91%, so that's pretty great, and then 74% for the audience score, so this movie is beloved, and for good reason. Uh, critics' consensus, Bone Tomahawk, particular, oh wait, no, Bone, excuse me, Bone Tomahawk's peculiar genre blend. Won't be for everyone, but its gripping performances and a slow-burning story should satisfy those in search of something different. Agreed. And that's the thing that this movie has in common with Dave Made a Maze. They're both different. They're both something a little bit different. Dave Made a Maze is maybe even more different, but this is a unique blend of genres. Um... Ultra violence aside, there's plenty to admire about this innovative genre bender. Yeah, there's, if you don't like disturbing imagery, you might not like this. Because some of the gore, it looks really realistic and it is gross, but it's very well done. Uh, and I was on the edge of my seat for the last like 40 minutes or so of this movie. And even though I said, like, the, it's a little bit boring and slow at the beginning, it's still interesting, and it, it really, like, develops the characters well, and the dialogue is really good, and everything makes sense, and everything's shot well, and that's why this movie's great. It's competently made, and such a fucking great ending, uh, the last 40 minutes or so, that just elevates this movie. It was very good. Um... A funny, strange, and haha -ha western landscape where it is all too easy to get pillaged, consumed, or lost. Um, yeah, I guess. I don't know about the haha -ha funny, but you know, sure, <laughs> I'll give it to you. Because, I mean, there's a couple of jokes, but it's mainly a pretty serious movie. It is mostly just an excuse for the debut director S. Craig Zaylor to whip the rug out from under you, Tarantino style. So this is a guy who, this was his first movie he directed, but he's done a few others since. And he, um, he's directed these movies, but he's also written the books and probably the screenplays as well. Um, and I get what they mean by that, but this is, you know, this is different enough from Tarantino. Um, and they don't really whip the rug out from under you. Yeah, I kind of like guessed that there, it was going to go in a similar direction. It's just the way that they did it was so exciting and so well done and captivating that it elevates the film. But if you just chop it all up to, oh, everyone's trying to be Tarantino when they do something like this, then yeah, you, it'll be lost on you. But if you just enjoy it, then maybe you can shut the fuck up, Kevin Mayer. Okay, anyway, moving on. Cult status could beckon for this well-made, macabre and violent macabre, sorry, and violent Western horror from cinematographer turned director Craig Zoller. So he's also cinematogra cinematographer. Uh, interesting. It has a nice line in rye chatter and a pleasantly old-fashioned lost posse plot with engaging odd characters. I agree with that. Striving against the wilderness while swapping cynical frontier wisdom. So it's mostly good reviews. I read the one, one bad one there. Let's find some more bad reviews. The overt racism is palpable and for all intents and purposes unexplored. Other than to make it so radically blatant. It cathunks you in the head. 
like one of the nameless tribes t titular weapon weapons. So they're saying that this is racist, right? Basically. But it's set in the 1890s. Like, this is how people talked and shit. Like, it's realistic. Um, so, and I think that the message isn't, like, racism is good. The The message is, you know, just try to fucking look out. The, what I get it from is look out for your fucking, for your friends and, and watch your fucking back when you're in the Old West because you could fucking die any day. Um, but yeah, of course there was more racism in it. It was the 1890s. It's, that's when it was set. Um, but let's see if there's more bad reviews. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Unlike great westerns that have come before it, Bone Tomahawk isn't one that takes its time to develop its characters and story. Are you fucking kidding me? I disagree with that full-heartedly, because I, I think they do all of that. I think that the story is developed it's like a slow burn but it developed really well um because it, it gets more and more exciting towards the end and i think that the characters are extremely well developed maybe even more well developed in the story um they have a lot of conversations on the on their journey and you you get to you know care about these characters except for bruder you don't like him but you know you kind of expect him to get his comeuppance uh, and he does, of course. It's ba 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 A dull and absolutely tedious western with a mild horror bent. But that's harsh. Ho mild horror bent? It was fucking in intense at the end there. Holy shit. So I don't agree with that. But mostly people like this movie. Uh, here, here's Leonard Maltin's review. It's never a bad time for a good Western, and Bone Tomahawk is a good Western. Simply put, I would agree with that. Whoa, Yeezy, how's it going? I'm doing well. How are you? Have you seen Bone Tomahawk? <laughs> Do you want to talk about it? Uh, welcome. Thank you for first time chatting. How are you doing? I'm just dandy. Um, let's look at... The IMDb page. I think we looked enough at the Rotten Tomatoes. Seven point one out of ten it gets. For IMDb, that's pretty good. The popularity is going down apparently. Um, but yeah, this came out in twenty sixteen, so it's been like six years or seven years or whatever. Um, and I had there. I've heard about this and I've wanted to see it for a while. It's been on the list for a while. Uh, but this is my first time actually watching it. So Kurt Russell, obviously Sheriff Hunt, probably the the actor that I know best in this. But there's a lot of notable names in here, so let's go through some of them. Patrick Wilson, this guy looks super familiar, and I don't really, I couldn't place it. He's an Insidious. That makes sense. Um, he might also be in Doom Patrol, maybe. Teen Titans Go. That's like Doom Patrol, but it's not Doom Patrol. Um, maybe he's not... Cause I think that's just maybe a guy that looks kind of like him. But, you know, Patrick Wilson. I definitely remember him in Insidious. And he's in The Conjuring, apparently, too. But I haven't seen that one. It's on the list, though. Um, so, yeah, I recognize that guy, but I wasn't quite sure about him. Richard Jenkins. He's in a bunch of shit. He played Chicory. He plays the... The sheriff's assistant or the deputy or whatever. Um, let's just look at what he's known for now. Richard Jenkins. Because he's in shit. Like a lot of shit. The Visitor. The Shape of Water. Step Brothers, of course. That's something I definitely recognize him from. And Burn After Reading. So yeah, he's one of those guys who's in just a ton of shit. Oh, and Nightmare Alley, I watched a little while ago. Yeah, tons of movies. He's he's really good, too. He's always good. Um, let's see. Who else is noteworthy? This Fred Melamed. He's another guy that I see in a lot of other stuff. He's in a ton of shit. He's in WandaVision, Lady Dynamite, which was a short-lived... 
Netflix show that I actually watched a little bit of, um, Barry, which I've seen, again, not a whole lot, but a little bit of, oh, and A Serious Man, which I, I quite like that movie, that's a Coen Brothers, um, that's a good, that's an underrated Coen Brothers, too, I like A Serious Man, um, let's, Sid Haig, he's only in it for a little bit, but Sid Haig, rest in peace now, but he was in tons of stuff, um, but mainly known for the Rob Zombie horror movies, House of a Thousand Corpses, and maybe he's in another one, but he's also in Devil's Rejects, those two, for sure. Um, oh, and David Arquette, who I always fucking think is Sam Rockwell, every time... I see him in a movie. I think that he is Sam Rockwell. But then I look it up and say, no, it's David Arquette. They are different people. They are different people. Uh, he's in Scream 2, Scream 3, <laughs> Eight-Legged Freaks, and Never Been Kissed. Uh, he's had a career, but maybe not as good as Sam Rockwell. Um, maybe that's why I recognize him more often. Anyways, Sid Haig. I know he's in what I said he's in, but I'm kind of curious of what else. Kill Bill Volume 2 he's in. The Devil's Rejects, of course, we knew that one. House of a Thousand Corpses. And Diamonds Are Forever from 1971. So he's been acting forever, but he sort of became uh, a little more famous as his character, Captain Spaulding from House of a Thousand Corpses. But yeah, no, he's in this movie for a little bit. This must have been right before he died, um, which again, rest in peace. Uh, he seemed like a really nice guy, too. Obviously, I never met him, but he's in interviews and stuff. He seemed pretty cool. Um, Michael Parade, no one else, really. Jeremy Tardy, let's just look at him real quick and see. Known for Ballers, War Dogs, Dear White People. Uh, I don't really know him that well. Let's go back to the IMDb page. See, this movie made money. I think it probably did. In the box office. What? It didn't. It, it, this was a bomb. That's crazy to me. Um, budget was $1.8 million. And the gross was only 382000 That's weak. That's too bad. This movie's really good. It's on Tubi also. If people want to check it out. Um, but yeah, that's too bad because I quite liked this. And we'll get into more of the notes here. Uh, but yeah, if anyone's watching and you like what you see or and or hear, feel free to follow the channel. No pressure, but it would be appreciated. Um, anyways, let's look at my notes for Bone Tomahawk. And both of these movies, Dave Made a Maze and Bone Tomahawk, that I've reviewed today, they both have... I didn't have that many notes on them because they were, they were that good. <laughs> Uh, which is rare. You should have, like, a page and a bit of notes, but it's less than a page for both these movies. So, anyway, Bone Tomahawk notes. Waste no time getting to it. Even though this movie has a slow burn, they do start it off right at the beginning with someone's head getting cut into. So it's like, all right, it starts off with a little bit of action. And then it's a slow lull until it really picks up at the end. But they do get right into it, to be fair. David Arquette and Sam Rockwell. I already mentioned this, so I won't say much more other than Sam Rockwell and David Arquette. I always get them mixed up. And David Arquette is in this movie. Sam Rockwell is not. Um, good practical gore effects. Yeah, like some of the best I've ever seen, I think. Uh, just very realistic. And I love that it's not CGI. I don't think there's any CGI in it, maybe. But if there is, I couldn't tell. So therefore, it's good. Uh, and I like it when they mix it, but there's definitely some good practical in there, and it looks uh, really well done. Um, my next note is just the movie looks good. It's shot well. Um, you know, you got these nice landscapes and this western town. And it's just, it's put together very well. The movie looks good. I love it when they eat beans by the fire. It's a classic western thing, uh, and I don't know why, but I just, it gives me comfort when I see scenes like this. When people are eating beans by the fire, I just, I, it makes me want to do that. I want to be there with them, eating the, eating the beans. It seems fun. That, that part of Western life, like that one part, the rest of it seems absolutely terrible. But eating beans by the fire always appealed to me. 
Anyway, moving on. <laughs> they carried cheese on their trip. So I guess it would maybe be fine, depending on how you start. But coolers didn't exist yet, and they have cheese, and they're just carrying cheese with them. And they're on this trip for so many days, and they're in this blazing sun. So would the cheese go bad? I don't know. And maybe the cheese is made differently. I don't know what kind of cheese it is. So maybe it was a particular kind that was made to last with more preservatives or something. I'm not sure. But being a 21st century man that I am, I would assume that the cheese would go bad. So I don't know. Maybe it's fine, but I still thought it was weird that they're carrying their cheese on this long trip. And it's obviously not refrigerated or anything because they, they didn't have the technology. Um, my next note is, man, fuck Bruder. Because Bruder is the character. He's one of the members of the party that's going to rescue. Um, so I don't know if I've even set up the basic plot. I've said what it is, which is a, a Western bending, uh, a genre, but a uh, genre bending Western rather. But the basic plot is this small town called Bright Hope. Um, there's a drifter that gets put in prison and Mr. Matthews, I think, is the, the name of of his husband, of her husband, but she's a nurse. So she goes and to look after this guy and just make sure he's okay um, and, like, cauterize his wounds and that kind of thing, get him cleaned up. But then, and I like the way they show this, too, we find out that she's been kidnapped. We see little things like a, a, an arrow in the wall. We find out that a tribe of troglodytes and their cannibals, a tribe of cannibals has taken them and Deputy Nick. Uh, so they've been kidnapped and taken to this tribe of cannibals. So Kurt Russell and these guys are going to go save him. And the one guy, Bruder, just really fucking sucks. He's so annoying. And he, you know, you're not supposed to like him, but they do a good job of building the character because you can see how he's, how he got to be this way. They explain that his parents were killed by Native Americans. So that's why he hates, as they say in the movie, Indians. You know, it's not necessarily the preferred nomenclature nowadays, but I think it's okay to say because that's, that's the way it was then, and that's when, when this movie was set. But, yeah, they, they go, um, they go and rescue, that's the plot, is they go rescue, but Bruder just sucks. They build, they build a good character around him, but you don't like him, because he's just unnecessarily racist, and he's shooting people, like these Mexicans, unnecessarily, uh, and no one likes him. He's just a big dick. He thinks he's the smartest guy there. And he's he, he's got a big ego. And he's just a big asshole. He's making jokes about Mr. Matthew's wife. Um, or what's that guy's... What's the character's name? I say Mr. Matthews. I'm not sure if that's right. Arthur. We'll just call him Arthur. But I, maybe the last name is Matthews. I don't know. I'm th maybe I'm thinking of fucking Boy Meets World because that's the family of that. <laughs> that's different, very different productions. Uh, no, but his yeah, his wife and he, um, Brooders talk like making sexual innuendos about, and he's just a dick. You don't like Brooder. That's my point. He's an asshole. Um, my next note is, what does close that aperture mean? So I just. Like, I know what an aperture is on a camera, but they're, they're, and maybe they, that was reference to the telescope they have. I just, I'm not sure what he meant by close that aperture. It could have been, like, a turn of phrase, like, to mean, like, to come in as a team. Or, I don't, I don't, I just don't know what it meant. So I wrote it down. I don't, I didn't get that part. Uh, but I don't think it was that important. My next note is very good storytelling. And I do a full heartedly agree with this. Because some of the bad reviews on Rotten Tomatoes are saying that it, it's the it's not a good story, but I think it's it's a very very well t uh, told story, um, and it's very exciting, um, and the the characters uh, are developed very well, and it's very entertaining, um, and so yeah, I think it's good storytelling, because even though it's sort of slow burn, I was captivated for most of the movie. I was entertained. I was intrigued by these characters and the journey that they have to go on. It's an interesting story to me. Um, 
Because, you know, you want them to go save his wife, and you have Arthur, who he's fucked up, his leg is fucked up, so it makes it even more, like, hard to watch, but still entertaining, and, like, you're captivated, and you're invested, because you want him to fucking persevere, uh, and, and go save his wife. Um, the action is so intense. When it gets to the last 40 minutes, I was fucking, like, holding my hair like this, and fucking, like, jittering around, and being like, oh my god, like, holy, like, every fucking moment is just intense at that, at the, for the last 40 minutes. Um, boo, 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 boo. holy crap, the scene everyone talks about. So, the scene everyone talks about is the body getting sawed right in half. And it's super gruesome, but it's very well done. And if you don't if you like this, and are, you know, if you're disturbed by that kind of imagery, I wouldn't recommend this. But that being said, if that doesn't bother you, and you like gore, you might you might like this, and it's done very well. And that's the kind of thing that I like to see is the effects done very well. And this definitely was a case of that. Um, but yeah, that scene is... There's a reason everyone talks about it. It's very intense. My next note is... They should try to break the cage when nobody's around. So this is like my main note, and it's still... It's kind of still a, a nitpick. But this is my main note against the movie and again i love the movie but this one thing didn't make sense to me so they show kurt russell and chicory are locked in these cages by the cannibals and they're trying to break open and then the, he kurt russell gets his finger chopped off by one of the tribe so he stops but wouldn't you try because they were make like you could hear the bars like creaking in this wooden cage like it felt like they could maybe break it if they tried a little harder and then there's a lot of points in the movie where they're like there's nobody around them. Like they could be trying to break out of the cage um, when the when the tribe isn't in the room with them. So I think that that was a missed opportunity. They should have tried to do that more. But that being said, that's still a nitpick. Um, you could argue that they didn't want to to risk it because they had some other plans. Like they were trying to feed um, feed the tribe some of this. Uh, what was it? It was medicine that, like, kills you if you drink too much. I forget exactly what it was. But they they have that as a plan. But still, I think that they would have tried to break it when there was nobody around because they showed that it was possible. Like, it was creaking. Like, they could have maybe broke the, the cage um, if they tried. But anyway, moving on. Arthur falling down so much is very painful to watch. So I briefly mentioned this, but yeah, he his legs messed up, and there's so many points in the movie where his leg gets fucked up, and he's falling down, and the whole time you're like, fuck, like I I want you want him to be okay, but it does add an extra level of sort of anxiety to the movie, uh, and but captivated me very well with that because it like you you want him to get there, you're you're in the you're locked in. I was locked in for the for this movie, especially towards the end. Um, when he's trying to go rescue them all, and he's all fucked up, but he's figuring out how to how to kill these guys because they have these whistles in their in their lodge in their necks to communicate. So he like fucking cuts one out and blows it, and then so they come and he shoots them, and it's so fucking cool. And you're really rooting for him, but when he's falling down, you're just like fuck. You're so you're worried about him because you don't want him to get hurt. Uh, you care about his character at this point. Uh, my last note, simply put, holy fuck, that was good. It was extremely satisfying ending. It was extremely good movie, in my opinion. The only thing that I could really put against it is, yeah, the thing with the, they're not breaking the cages, and they could have, maybe. And also that maybe it's just a little bit boring towards the beginning, but I think that's excusable, because it is so well fleshed out with the characters and the story uh, and that ending is just so fucking good that it makes the whole movie fantastic so let's give it uh honestly i'm going i'm going nine nine point seven it's that it's that good it's that fucking good i really like this movie i would highly recommend it it's um interesting genre bending 
film that I didn't expect to be this good, honestly. And it really was. So, Bone Tomahawk, 9.7 out of 10 ducks. 